Hi, welcome back to In The Studio. My name is Rachel Simons and I will be your host today. Today we will be discussing Make It Happen for Yolo County. I am here today with the board president and a youth representative. Hi, welcome Jan and Thank welcome you. Vance. Thank you. So, what is Make It Happen for Yolo County and how did this get started? You want to describe what we are? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, we're an all volunteer nonprofit that accepts donations and um, cash, I guess. Um, monetary. <laughs> monetary donations. Monetary donations, yeah. I messed that one up. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah. We work to serve um, former and current foster youth called transitional age youth or TAY, T A Y. Youth that are moving into independent living situations from backgrounds such as group homes, foster families. So, current services may help them with rent, they may help them with sometimes some food but nobody provides household furnishings and supplies. So we have stepped in to try to assist with that because it's a pretty big monetary cost. Um, and we got started in 2014 is when we officially became a nonprofit 501c3. And we have been working since that time and expanding every year. We've been able to increase um, because of the generous donations for Yolo County the number of youth that we serve. So you're saying these people going through this transitional age, around what ages are these um, young adults that you guys usually help? Typically ages um, 18 to 24. And would you say this is more of like a fragile time period for these people at this time or like where they are looking for this kind of help with like furniture and more of those type of things? I think Many um, youth that are moving out in that situation, if you don't mind my using myself as an example, I've been pretty fortunate in my life, and I know that my kids, when they were able to move out, I was able to help them out you know, from a financial standpoint as well as letting them take some of the things in our house or if they needed things, we were able to help out with that mm -hmm. if they couldn't provide for themselves. And a lot of youth... I think in the foster care system do not have that kind of support either from family, friends, or financially. So again, and they don't get that through the state and county and that's um, just something that isn't really addressed. So when we recognize that as a need, then we decided that we wanted to see if we could help out with that. And there is no other organization in Yolo County providing those services that we're aware of. Oh wow. Yeah. So when you guys, are you getting referrals or speaking to other agencies to get these people or people coming to you um, with these people that you're helping? Do you want to address that one? Um, yeah, so we often have um, a few county workers that we um, are associated with and we have um, county organizations that we're um, working with um, as partners. So. Um, what like cost of youth um, sometimes, um, mainly just um, referrals from social service workers though. Mm -hmm. There is a unit um, building on what Vance said. There's a transitional age youth unit with the Yolo County Department of Health and Human Services. So we get, we do vet, so we sort of make sure that it's an appropriate referral. And as Vance said, we get referrals from the social workers from the TAY unit. We have had workers uh, referrals from the Yellow County Parole Officers for Age Appropriate Youth, CASA, as Vance mentioned. We also work with the UC Davis Guardian Scholars Program, and um, we'll sometimes get some outside referrals, um, again, that we vet from the similar populations, too. But we do ask that the youth be involved in Yolo County social services. Yeah, that's good. So it's really helping the community here since there we're trying that. to do that. Yeah. yeah, we're very, as Vance mentioned, we're all volunteer and pretty small, so we just don't have the capability to expand beyond that at this point. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, why did both of you find, like, why did you both want to get involved 
Um, did you feel like you had a personal connection to wanting to help foster care system or share a bit of your personal story, Vance? Um, yeah, so I actually um, grew up a foster kid, former foster youth myself, and um, it was a um, bit of a difficult transition um, in the beginning, coming straight out of high school to UC Davis um, on my own, but um, I did have support and that's what actually got me through it. It's the support of others that um, helped me persevere and continue. Um, so that's why now I just look to give back and help others that were or maybe in the position I was. So um, yeah, I started because Jan, she actually um, just brought me on after we had been working together in another organ organization, another nonprofit. So. That's great. Um, about about what are you guys specifically collecting in terms of what type of furniture, what is needed, what do you find most popular to be like that is an item that people need? We need small dressers, Rachel. <laughs> small. So, small. <laughs> so thank you for asking that. So um, most of our youth are moving into small. Um, either rooms or apartments. Mm -hmm. So we um, are trying to purchase appliances and kitchen supplies new now that we've been able to increase our funding. Again, thank you to the Yolo County community. They've been incredibly supportive. Um, we do are in need of small dressers. We take night tables. Um, we are looking for Things like small bookshelves and coffee tables and small kitchen tables, maybe seating four chairs. But we ask, we sort of have a little unofficial mantra that if you wouldn't give it to your children or youth, we don't want to give it to ours. So mm -hmm. we yeah. don't have the capability to repair anything. So we ask that it be gently used and in good condition so that we can turn it over right away yeah. and, and distribute it. So, but the key word is small. We can't, we take small sofas or love seats. We, we can't take sofa beds because literally we physically move them and they're just really heavy, those <laughs> beds. So, um, but things like small love seats, two or three seats, small sofas and couches are great and very much appreciated by the youth. And I was seeing that you guys also accept gift cards or? We, we find that the youth appreciate gift cards mainly to Walmart and Target. And on our website, we have a list of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. The way that it works is we have what we call a wish list. Please kick in if I'm missing something here, Vance. <laughs> um, that all the social workers and people who work with us to provide referrals do complete with their youth. Mm -hmm. And then if we can, we have the youth come out to our storage units. We have four here in Davis. And they can also pick out additional things that they might need. For example, we just last weekend had a youth that came out that had only requested a bed frame and mattress and box springs, but then realized that they didn't have sheets, comforters, pillows, pillowcases, also took lamps, um, a nightstand. So was able to find a lot more that they could use, and that's kind of been the norm. So when we can, we try to get them out. We also deliver to them mm -hmm. if they are unable to do that. Yeah. So they physically can visit these storage units? And we prefer that they do, yeah. actually, oh, because wow. usually they find other things that yeah. they might need. And it's really helpful when they are there because oftentimes when you're given a list or an opportunity to receive things in a position, such as uh, foster youth, you don't want to ask for too much. So um, um, being there and seeing the things kind of, kind of makes it easier because um, it kind of takes some of that pressure off because you see that um, there is, um, it's here for you and there is more of it. So um, rather than just seeing the list and saying like, I need this and things. So yeah, yeah. it's really helpful. That is a great opportunity. That. So it's like hands on and definitely could meet the people that are donating, which I feel like is an important part, like seeing that, oh, there's these people, there are a support system. Do you find that you ever contact the people that you guys are helping after and, or for updates or anything? We actually have developed a little bit of a 
unofficial mentor relationship with a couple of the youth, mm -hmm. and we have had uh, several of them contact us when they no longer needed and asked if we wanted it back. Wow. Which is yeah, it's really it's really rewarding. Yeah, and that is. Youth are extremely appreciative. Um, extremely, yeah. I've never felt in the five years that we've been doing this, I've never felt taken advantage of. Um, often there's word of mouth. We we are asking that they pay it forward, um, and we do ask recently just to help us if they don't mind sharing a story or providing a before and after picture that we can post on our Facebook page or on our website, um, just how we helped them. Because people want to know the stories yeah. and, and they want to know yeah. how they're helping. And I know when I donate, I want to know where my money is going. So I hope that people will understand that it's pretty much going as directly as possible to the youth. To the youth, definitely. Yeah. There's even times um, where we've had several youth offer to um, help out mm -hmm. in our endeavors and you know just offer a helping hand so wow, um, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah it's been it's been great yeah, yeah. Um, about how many uh, youth are do you think you take on per year about doing this in 2014 we started when we were first starting out we served 12 mm -hmm. last year we served 36 oh wow and it doesn't sound like a huge amount but it's a relatively small population mm -hmm. overall then we plan on continuing to expand not only the number of youth served but the referring agencies mm -hmm. so this is the first year for example that we've had referrals from the parole officers and um, and we continue to keep the relationship with the previous referring agencies and tend to grow those as well and keep expanding that number <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah the need is there um where can people drop off these items or um we, we, ask, things. we ask, do you mind if I take this no. one? So we ask if they can go to our website at www.mihyolo.org. Um, there is uh, info, information access there that they can ask. We ask that people provide um, pictures of their offering donations so that we can just vet that and make sure that it's something that we need. And then we have a volunteer that is great who is helping us um, communicate with that. So okay. the best way is just to go to our to website. Go on the website. Mm -hmm. That way they can receive all the information. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, I really appreciate you guys being here today. Is there any social media pages or anything? Like you said, there was a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Is there Instagram? We, I, okay. am not very tech savvy, so yeah. I think we have a Twitter account, but I don't really know. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No, we do, okay. we do Facebook or Honestly, we're working on that, but again, we're pretty small. So, um, Facebook or our just our website right now would probably be the best place to go. Okay. Well, I yes. appreciate your time being here, and I <laughs> yeah. hope that everyone, you know, definitely takes a look to donate because I feel like it's such a small thing that can go such a long way in someone's life. So it's it's been really rewarding, and thank you so much for having us. Yeah, we really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. That was in the studio. Um, let's make it happen.